Hey everyone, welcome to the stream. Uh, gonna be have a lot of fun, I reckon, this morning because I'm gonna continue on with the character, but we've done really good progress yesterday. So, yeah, uh, you will see that as we get into this sort of groove, things start to improve, gets done a lot more consistently or faster. On another note, I've got a little update on this character. This is um. This is one from my newest series that I'm building out called How to Create Beautiful Animation Characters in Blender. So uh, this is a full production level tutorial series that I'm gonna be releasing on YouTube. Um, early days yet, but um, yeah, most of it's recorded apart from the texturing part. I've decided I'm gonna add the texturing to it. And um, yeah. I got this last real big puzzle out the door yesterday. I figured out this hair stuff and uh, yeah, it's looking really cool. I'm really excited to show how this hair works um, because it's all done with geometry nodes and hair cards. I figured out how to do hair cards with geometry nodes and uh, the result is really effective. It's so cool. And the nice thing about this, this is the issue I had with the previous tutorial I did on YouTube or walkthrough rather, um, when I did the hair, I couldn't animate it, could not be animated. This can at least be converted to a proper mesh and rigged, which is really cool. How cool is that? So I'm really looking forward to describing how I made this happen. And the cool thing about all of this, yes, this is the very start, so it's cool. Um, so the cool thing about all of this stuff with this hair is that it's dynamic so you can just keep on adding new hair and uh it works like a treat so if let's bring this down to one it will just add new hair and it makes new hair cards how cool is that <laughs> it can be groomed and all that sort of stuff and when you look at it when it's rendered how cool is that so um really excited to talk about this in the video series so keep an eye out on this because I think it's going to be really, really interesting to see how people react to it. So um, if you are interested in learning how to do characters properly, please look out for this, subscribe to the channel, um, get notified because uh, it will come out as an exclusive preview first, like this, uh, the whole series will come out as an exclusive preview, and then I'm going to drop feed the tutorials each week or so um, for YouTube. So yeah, really cool stuff going forward with this. No, no add-ons, no add-ons at all. Just 100% geo nodes. A modified geo nodes, um, a modified geometry nodes um, preset. So basically, I took the preset from the asset browser, so the set hair curve profile, and then I uh, modified it following a tutorial of my own, <laughs> and then. Um, and then uh, converted it to a mesh to be used with hair cards. So it's got a customized UV, which is cool, or a, a parametric, parametric, I guess you can say, or is it procedural? I'm not sure if you want to call it that. Um, but it generates the UVs for you, and then you can apply whatever hair card you want, like a like a regular material. So it's really cool. And I'm actually really excited to just have this character out as well because I think I'm going to turn this into a downloadable rig at one stage if i can get the rig looking really cool because i think it looks really nice it's a really playful little character it's got a nice style to it and yeah it's really clean good base mesh and uh yeah it deforms really well so yeah keep an eye, eye, eye out on that yeah yeah it's gonna be a big one <laughs> a big tutorial series so keep an eye out on it um so let me just open up twitch and we'll get started all right. Oh, thanks. Thanks, uh, Sketchy Squirrel. Uh, let's see. Let's go open up Twitch. I should probably just get the app, but I think I never can really get things done properly. Uh, anyway, with it. So let's just go to create a dashboard and stream manager. And for those who are here, thank you on both YouTube and Twitch, really appreciate it. And let's jump right in. 
how do you know where to put the wrinkles in the clothing? Uh, based on my concept art, so my uh, reference image. Um, but you do have to kind of study cloth to some degree. And I'm also just stylizing the crap out of it too. So it's not exactly accurate, but it's just in line with the style. So it's about choosing when, they, when to make that style choice, I guess. Um, yeah. Cool. So let's open up yesterday's file. And it came up pretty good. I re-meshed this again after the stream. I re-meshed this pants again. And it came up much nicer. So I cleaned it up. So at least some parts, like going down the um, going down the pants, it's it's not spiraling as much, so uh, it it will deform and be a lot easier to rig. So I did clean that up a little bit, even though I did say that like in this case I wasn't going to be picky about it, but I decided to be picky about it as you do. But it's okay. So the pants are looking really cool. I'm really happy with them. And I think once I texture them and get some tune shading on these, it's going to look really nice. So um, what I want to finish up here with the pants is just to get the flap in there. I'm going to model that, model that manually. And then we'll do the feet. And then we can get onto some retopper. And then we'll get the singlet on there and get the mask and all that sort of stuff. So we've got two hours to do this. Um, and yeah, let's get started. So... Um, here, I have, a, I have a choice, obviously, whether or not to, um, whether or not to continuously have this mesh come out like so. Now, the easy way to do this, because, yeah, I did sculpt the trousers and I remeshed it using this plugin for the, um, for the remesher. Much more reliable. So, yeah, they'll sculpt it first. Do you typically model both, model, polymodel and Sorry, do you typically polymodel cloth and wrinkles directly or use sculpting simulations first? Uh, in this case, I sculpted it. In the other character that you just saw a moment ago, if you didn't see it, it's this one. If you didn't see this one, this one was done by hand without any sculpting. So you can do either way. It really depends on the um, on what you want to do. So I, in this case, I felt like doing it manually was more appropriate for this character because it's the jump, the, um, the design was a much more simplistic design and I didn't want to go too far into realism here. So just doing it with um, manually polymodeling it felt better. If you wonder what that, that creak was, my cat opened the door. Uh, <laughs> um, whereas with this one, I sculpted it and you can see there's a few different ones here, different kinds of remeshes here. Come on, Arno. Stop being a little, hold on. Just give me a second. <laughs> so just to show you again, our little monster, our little monster here. Here he is, just to say hello, our little mascot, if you want to call him that. Hello, hello, hello. He's causing all kinds of trouble. All right. Uh, what's the remesh plugin? I've been going completely manually. The remesh plugin is called Quad Remesher, and it's quite expensive. It's about two hundred dollars for the. Uh, I think it's two hundred bucks for the um, the plugin alone, which is crazy, right? But it does, uh, it's based on the same remeshing properties of um, ZBrush. All right. So if you want to get a ZBrush level stuff without paying the subscription, which is basically, you'd be paying 200 bucks in about two months anyway. Um, yeah, you get it. And it's permanent. It's a permanent license. <laughs> I got to do some more. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build some emojis for those who are members, by the way. There's going to be two cats, at least. One black cat, one orange cat to represent my cats. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, let's move on. Cool. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab the top of these pants here. Yeah, I know, right? Hey, dude. How you doing? Welcome to the stream, Matt. All right, cool. So I'm going to extrude this part out. All right, extrude this part out. Now, the big issue at the moment is if I want the pants, if I want this part here, oh Christ, 
Hold on. <laughs> Cat's in a mood today. All right, cool. So um, here, what I'm going to do is you'll see that if I go ahead and turn on uh, face direction, face orientation, you'll see that the normals here are inverted. Now, that's because I just extruded outwards. But that's actually good for me at this point in time because what I need to do, I know, right? It's re He's really loud. And he's a bit hyperactive at the moment. So what... The reason why I want that to be the case is if I bring this down like so, I want that flap to come back out this way without adding any solidify modifiers. The cat is already doing black black fit flips at the moment. Um, what I can do is extrude out this area. But before I do that, you see how we have two flaps. So what I want to do is uh, remove one here, okay, and Actually, I'll do that after the fact. I'll do that after the fact. Um, I'm going to extrude out and then out like this. Right. And obviously, uh, bring that in a little bit like that. And then I'm going to extrude down and then out to get my the right sort of fabric direction, if you want, if that makes sense. And that will work quite, quite well. So... What I need to do now is sort of tuck one side into the other to get the, the look that I want. All right, so let's go into the side view. Let's get this rotated in the right direction. Can you hear the chaos? He's jumping everywhere. Classic orange cat, honestly. Um, he's been a real shit lately. Uh, cool. So what I'm going to do is grab that, extrude that out, Kind of give it the shape that I want. And we'll, we'll soften out this fabric here as well with a bevel. Like that. Okay. And I'll add a few divisions here. But before I do that, I want to separate one side. So put it in line with the rest of my geometry there. So it's going to be... Let's just reduce some of this as well. Because that's a lot of geo there. On the remesher. Probably just reduce that like quite a bit actually. Let's just reduce it by half or one third even. All right, cool. Now, if you're wondering whether or not I'm going to do that with the pants over here, probably not because it's uh, pretty important for the structure of the pants and they will spiral everywhere, I'm pretty sure, as you can see. So they will go in different directions because of the sculpt. All right, so I've got that going on there. I might actually, yeah, I'll keep that there for now. And now what I'm going to do is just keep my reference in mind. And let's try and sort of, yeah, let's uh, separate this first. And then we'll start to sculpt out the shape, so to speak. So the connection is here. So what I'm going to do is push V on the keyboard. And with soft select connected only, I can then reduce the size of one. and then tuck it in and even rotate it. So I'm gonna rotate that like that. Like so. And then I can kind of get that shape that I want. Push that forward. And now we're talking. Let's try and get into that mesh. Here we are. Oh, wrong one. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? This one. <laughs> this is the only problem with like poly modeling styles, I guess you can say, is uh, can be a bit of a bitch to uh, get all that right in the end. All right, cool. 
Awesome. Hey, hey, uh, Marcus Sudenio. Thank you for joining. Again, if you're on Twitch, sorry if I delay my responses. Just don't see the comments come up so quickly. Um, cool. So I got that going on and it's looking pretty average at the moment. Obviously, if we shade smooth, it looks a little bit clearer, but I want it to be a bit more distinctive. So firstly, let's go ahead and add some geometry there just so I can actually stretch that out a little bit more like that and have something to work with to sort of shape it. All right, cool. So that will do, I think, and I can probably reduce some of this as well. So I'm going to reduce some of this side as well. And also the nice thing about this method of keeping the clothing separate is that if I want to simulate the pants, right? The way I, I would plan on simulating the pants is basically I would simulate only the bottom part. I would only, only simulate that part and this part would just be rigged. And then if I want to give it a bit more personality, I would simulate the top part. Yeah, Jesus Christ, these cats, honestly. Oh, they choose their times po really poorly. All right, so... All right, cool. So let's go ahead and do that. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and get out of that orientation view. And see how it's all coming together. And you can see it's looking too similar to that. So let's go give it a bit of a sculpt. Just sculpt that out, smooth things out. And you can see I probably need to add another thing there. And then I'm going to do one little thing to give this a bit more shape. All right, and I'll show you what that is in a second. All right, so that's looking pretty cool. And what I wanna do before I do anything else is select everything of this part here. Let's isolate that. And what I'm gonna do is push I to inset. And what that will do is basically create a nice loop around the corners to smooth, keep that nice and rounded. So It'll allow me to round out the corners a little bit, as you will see in a second. All right. So now we have these loops here, right? And now we can sort of round them out, give it a bit more of a natural curve like that, which is what I want, especially if I end up subdividing it, which I probably won't, but you know, it'll just in case. Now that looks a little bit nicer. All right, cool. And now I can go ahead and separate this because even if this part, I don't want to be solidified, maybe I can still solidify this and give it some thickness. And with that, there we go. And then of course, if we select these areas, they're just a loop around the border and go E, uh, we want to set it as edge bevel weight to be 100. We can kind of reduce that hard edges with a bevel modifier. And that can be set to only the um, weight. I will sort of soften that out a little bit. If you look at the wireframe now, you'll see it has a bit more geometry there. All right, cool. I'm just going to double check to see if YouTube hasn't just shit itself. Let's go to, sorry, just going to check something out. Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, just going to just go to my stream and make sure I'm getting the comments. Yep, I am. Cool. Awesome. All right, sweet. As long as that's working, that's good. <laughs> All right. So, um, 
what's next? So what's next is basically to sculpt this out and give it a bit more character because I want to have it in line with the rest of the, um, the setup. So what I'm going to do is grab, turn off wireframe. And you'll see I've got this sort of broken edge there, that sort of fo fake fold. So I can either do that with um, a little bit of to and fro with the geometry. So what I'm going to do is basically just grab this edge here. So to speak, I'm going to grab soft select and I'm going to rotate that. And don't worry, it will get better. Like that. <laughs> there we go. When you finish this character, you're going to go, yeah, I will retop over the character, especially this guy. Definitely going to retop over that guy. All right. So once I've done that, let's just go into sculpt mode and just sort of flatten that out. Okay, we're getting there in the end. So we're starting to see that hard edge. So what I'm going to do is bevel this. Let's see what happens. Or, yeah, what I'll need to do is probably really pull it out. So I'm going to really pull it out. And push it up a little bit. And you can see this is the issue about when you just have straight up quads, it doesn't quite work out. So I'll need to sort of refine this in the um, sculpt. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my wireframe again, just to see how it's all coming together and just sort of smooth out that area first before I do what I need to do. So I'm gonna smooth out that area first, because I have a plan. All right. Oops, where's my reference? Come on. All right, so basically what I'll need to do is just redirect some curves. All right, so what can we do here? In edit mode, I'm going to basically add a triangle here-ish. Add a triangle here, ish. Now it's not perfect, obviously, because I'm not really following any anything here at the moment. Let's worry about that later. And I'm going to add some subdivisions, so that will basically give it, allow me to create the right kind of shelf for this um, to work. All right. So let's go ahead and do that again. And I'm going to kill off this loop. Like that. And see how this is going to come together. So what I want to do is kill off this loop. And then redirect that one. Like that. Do you put legs? Is the cloth covering legs? No, it's not not necessary to do that. Um, because uh, in this case, he's not going to change clothing. So I'm not going to bother with the legs. I'm just going to... Um, I'm just going to basically work with whatever... Like, keep it as simple as possible for me. Because i got like four other characters that model. So I'm not going to bother doing all that sort of detail. If it's not going to be necessary for the final piece. That makes sense. Let's go grab this tablet driver. All right, cool. Yeah, sculpt these parts, and then you have to—you still have to retop it. Oh, it's really out of. Hello. Wow, it's really out of whack. Okay, interesting. For some reason my pen is really non non not calibrated properly. Oh wait, because I got the wrong one. <laughs> Alright, there we go. That's better. That's better. Okay, so um sculpt mode. I'm just gonna go ahead and sculpt that out a little bit more. And now let's do something like this.
And always be mindful if you need to sort of smooth out certain areas, you can. Screen tablets are awesome. If you can afford them, of course. And it's much better for your back and neck, I find. All right, so I'm also gonna lift up this area here to give it a bit more shape. So it's up this area here to give this one a bit more shape. And I could technically go ahead and also, um, Let's give that, oops. I could also uh, add some actual geometry loop. Um, sorry, check out, uh, sorry. I can also, um, sorry, my brain's going all haywire. Add some custom loops in there as well to really get that shape in there. So I'm probably going to do that with the same sort of thing I did in my previous, in my most recent tutorials that I'm going to be publishing. All right, cool. So what I'm going to do here, that looks better. What I'm going to do here is grab some faces like so. Probably like these ones here. And inset. And I'm going to loop those together. Like not loop it, let's soften the loop. Not sure why that, yeah, that's all right. Soften this loop and then grab the inner side of that loop, which are these ones here, soften those out. And I'm going to scale in. And then flatten that. And then on these areas here, I'm going to pull those this way and squish them and that will give me that 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 sort of shelf for the fold now it's not realistic by any means but it does look good enough and I can sort of smooth those out smooth these out and that kind of looks kind of cool so again it all depends on your needs. And I'm going to pinch that a bit more now. So pinch. Grab. That should be good. Like that. Oh, they're really good. For sure. It's just a matter of whether, yeah, just do it when you're ready. If you don't have a tablet at all yet, then just get a regular tablet. Don't worry about it. Now, the thing about this as well is that if I did want to subdivide this, it will look pretty good as well. So you can see here, that's looking pretty good. Pretty smooth. All right, cool. So I'm going to add one more of these sort of um, sort of drop bits to just to break it up a little bit. And I'll probably do it like going down like that. So I'm actually going to grab a weird loop. I'm actually going to redirect this loop now this way. And it's actually going to create some weird um, artifacts, I reckon, but that's all right. Going this way. I think that will do. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Now, I'm not too worried about topology at the moment because I am literally redirecting the whole thing. So basically what I'm going to do is delete these. And I'll be doing a brand new sort of thing with it. All right, cool. 
let's uh, go ahead and smooth this out a little bit. Let's just see what we got here. So now, here, I'm going to merge that at last, and these will end up being like this. See how annoying that cat is? <laughs> All right, cool. So there we go. Let's add that and merge that. And then merge these two here. All right, cool. So what I'm going to do here is basically the same thing. Grab these. and soften these out. Now I'll worry about those triangles in a second. And I'm going to go ahead and push I to inset. Scale inwards with uh, all on the normals. And now I have that, that, that perfect sort of break. <laughs> I know, right? The fuck. Uh, sorry. These cats, the, this cat in particular has been very annoying last couple of days. Um, just meowing at the night, in the middle of the night. 4 a.m., 3 a.m., just doing all kinds of uh, little things to just aggravate us a little bit lately. Um, cool. So with these triangles, we have a we have a, an option. We can either kill off the triangles or leave them as is. And as you can see, it doesn't really cause that much artifacting in the triangles, so it's not really an issue. Not getting any pinching. And I'm not planning on subdividing it all that much. And even if it does, it's not really doing much in the in the way of um, any problems there. So, yeah, I work professionally in Blender. Yes. Even when the cat's meowing like that. All right, cool. Um, what I can do here is actually redirect all of these back down to this area here. So what I'm going to do is... Sorry, let me just take care of this little guy. One second. There we go. Let's see if he starts scratching the door because I put him into my office. <laughs> All right, cool. So what we're going to do is redirect. Redirect this this way. Like so. All right. And then we're going to kill off these triangles. And these quads for now. And then we can just start to bring down the mesh like this. And I didn't realize that there's also some verts there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that in like that. Oh, really? <laughs> Our cat is really loud. Like if it will penetrate the entire house. So does not surprise me that your cat's freaking out thinking that there's a cat nearby, honestly. Yeah, all right. Uh, but yeah, he's testing our patience, that's for sure, today. Lately, he's been testing our patience. All right. This one here can kind of be merged with this. And this can be kind of that can be that can be good. That would be good the way it is there. So going forward, let's kill that off for now. We're going to add a vert there or an edge there. One, two, three, and then basically step it down. So you've got a triangle here. That's fine. And then we're going to subdivide that. And then we've got two, one, two, like so, which is perfect. And then we're going to do that 
here as well. So basically that will travel up like that. Yep, that'll be fine. Just like that. And then we can sort of smooth that out. And the nice thing about this, the nice thing about this is that we get this extra uh, ability to add another crease, basically. So basically you can add a second crease like that. And that would be pretty cool looking too. And then you can pop that up like so. And that's kind of what I want, which is great. Now, of course, this part here is now, I'm not kind of keen on that anymore. I can just have that travel right around the edge, the, the mesh. So let's um, kill this off. And this is all a part of the process, man, uh, people, because uh, it's always an experiment, always experimental, no matter what you do. So I'm just going to go ahead and merge it center, merge it center, and merge it center and then sort of smooth that out with the sculpt. And there we go. And I think that's looking pretty cool. And I can probably either loosen that up a little bit like that to get that going on. Or even better, I'm actually going to have these travel all the way through to the mesh on this side there. So I'm actually going to remove this and have those travel down this way as well. And that will give me the shape exactly what I want in my um, design. There we go, cool. So if we go over here, there we go. Looking pretty cool. And now I can actually sculpt that out. Like so. To get that. Which is kind of what I want. Which is great. Now the same thing has to apply here. I need to fix up these edges here. So let's have a look at those before we move on. Good morning. Let's fix these up. So these can either just travel up, which is pretty much what we want to do. So what we need to do is probably do a redirect somewhere here. Let's see. One, two, three. I think it'll be all right. Let's just, just kill off all of these. Yeah, this will be fine. We'll add some more geometry there, but we can actually cut them off as well. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven edges. So we can probably just add a couple first. Going that way. And we can, we can easily just delete these. That's about right. So yeah, we just delete those and then boom, done. Uh, and then add another crease there. And we have a fairly clean topology. <laughs> nice work with the donut tutorial. <laughs> all right, cool. So there we go. And with all that, we can actually add another crease if you want to. So I might actually do that with these extra, since I have that extra geometry to work with, I may as well add just another fold going this way. So add another fold there, like a bunched up piece of fabric. And there we go. Now it's looking cool. What do you guys reckon? I can refine this further down the line, but I think it's at a good space. 
and I'll just grab the um, pinch brush and sort of pinch it a little bit to get that going on there. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I'll live with that extra geometry there for now. Cool. Yeah, I think I'll easily live with that. Yeah, me too. I can't wait to get rigged too. I'll probably use a variant of... I'm not sure if I'm going to use a custom rig or use Rigify yet. I have a feeling that I'm going to use Rigify because there's so many characters to work with. Yeah, I plan on simulating it. So just to show you that this will work, let's just do it. Let's just do a little test. We're going to make this a collision. Let's go add this as a collision and add a pin to the top of that sheet. So these, these parts here can be pinned like that, including the inside track. Yep, that'll do. Add a pin. All right, and then we can add the cloth. And I'll put that at the top above the solidify, probably. All right, and then go to our pin section and test it. Let's kill off that keyframe. Now, the reason why that's happening is because the... Um, the collision distance is too small on both the collision here and the um, and the and the fabric. See how it's set to outer 0.2. That's 0.2 meters. So if you put 2 cm, it's 0.2. That's way too much. So it has to be like something like 0 0.05, which is like five mil. Same thing here on the collisions. So if we recut, if we did that, redid that, you can see it's now falling a lot better. And, you know, obviously with a little bit more finesse, it will look a lot nicer too. And now uh, with a little bit of extra mass or whatever, we can just add it to cotton as a preset. And now it's looking a little bit better still. I'm not sure why it's compressing. It shouldn't be compressing like that. But um, we can fix that as well. So basically, I would uh, remove that or reduce the geometry or uh, add a vertex group to pin that even more. But yeah, that's working, which is good. And if I move it around, it should. Yeah. Yeah, it's working well. So yeah, we'll uh, talk about that in the future. Oh, the reason why it's screwing up is because of the collisions here. That's what's causing that, I think. So you have to set up south collisions and all that sort of thing. So what I would probably do is, rather than it being just that, I'd probably add more geometry as part of that. And I'd probably end up killing off the geometry here. So one, two, three. At center, kill that off just to reduce the geometry. And I might add another one, another kill off here. One. Yeah, one, two, three. Kill that off. And just simplify the mesh as it goes around the back of the geometry. Yeah, the physics is always hard. Anything to do with simulation is always going to be a bitch. So you have to be very mindful of um, like how to do it. So I have a feeling that will fix it a little bit more. You can see that's working a lot nicer. And now what we need to do is basically just pin a lot more of it. So in wireframe, I'll just pin probably about that much. 
hopefully in the white paint. You just have to smooth that out a little bit. Like that. So only the bottom part will start to be affected. Let's give that a go. And you can see it's looking a lot nicer now. So as the character moves around, it will work quite well when he moves left and right and all that sort of stuff. I do have a, a Discord, but you've got to sign up for the Patreon to get access. Um, that's one of the perks of having the uh, Patreon. And it can pay, it's like three bucks. So if you want to join the Discord, you can. It's just through Patreon. But yeah, that's how you do the um, that's how you do the cloth. So yeah, that's all done. Happy with that. I could probably add a bit more geometry or finesse on the other side, but I can't be bothered. And I feel like it's not going to make much difference. And I can just probably do it with yeah, yet another sort of redirect or something like that. So probably like something like a simple one, just to give it a little bit more interest would be to just do another break apart like that it's funny how like just this little skirt area can take up 47 minutes of your time on the, on the stream but it's all useful information i hope yes yes you can go outside just give me a second Honestly, this guy. The only disadvantage of working from home, it seems, is dealing with cats. For better or worse. All right. Yeah, no worries, man. It'd be great if you did, because um, yeah, you can keep the conversation going. Yeah, I would have a free one, but yeah, it's just um, the problem is that yeah, I'm trying to make this actually a full time thing, and I can't offer everything for free, unfortunately. It gets too uh, muddy, muddy. All right, cool. I think that'll do for now. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That's fine. All right. All right, cheers, dude. Thank you, Corey. All right, cool. So that's done. Happy with that. Let's check out the... Um, let's turn off the wireframe view. And that's looking pretty cool. Really like that. And if I turn on the mat cap... He's looking pretty sick. What happened to his face? That's weird. Did he get mirrored by accident? He must have. Eh, whatever. Who cares? And if you turn on cavity, he really starts to pop. Yeah. Cool. Not sure what happened to his face there, but uh, that's all right. I can probably just go ahead and just soften that out a little bit. Must have mirrored it by accident. Oh, something moved. Oh, I see. That's interesting. Just got to be careful. Oh, wait. His face is really skinny now. Although, I don't mind it. But... That's a bit of a shame. Don't know how that happened. Why did I sculpt the skirt if it's going to be simulated? Um, because I want to keep these folds designed. I don't want them to be manipulated. Like, when you simulate everything from scratch, you can't control any of it, really. It's very hard to control. So you at least want to control the default flow of the geometry first get it retoppoed and then at least when you have simulated it then you have like if you can't well firstly if you can't even um what's the word 
if you end up not being able to simulate it, you will have the ability to at least have the style that you want in the clothing. Um, but I actually kind of like it. it. Actually looks all right. And uh, yeah, proportions are all right still. It's fine. I'm not too fussed. It must have been, I must have auto mirrored it by accident or something. Yeah, so if I go to my previous version, part 11, or oh no, sorry, DLR 04. That's his face there. So what I can, I can, I, that's easy enough to fix. So what I can do is grab him, <laughs> grab that one, open up a new instance of Blender, and then replace him. So, there we go, fixed. So, that's all right. This is why you, um, this is why you, uh, back things up. So save as, and let's move on. Cool. So, oh, there's no difference. So if you want to just, if you feel more generous, you can go with the higher tier. If you want to go with the cheaper tier, it's the exact same thing. It's just cheaper. Um, I did that on purpose because, uh, firstly, I, I, when I first opened the Patreon, it was already set to $5 default, but then I brought the price down. So I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to reduce any features for those who are already a patron, but had to go down in cost. So, um, yeah, they're the same thing. Just go for the cheaper one. If you, if you want to pay for that. All right, cool. That's looking really cool. So now let's get the, um, Let's get the feet up and running. <laughs> now the feet, I'm probably just going to do um, manually because I can't be bothered sculpting it. And there's no point because I, I want to add the toes and I can't be bothered sculpting toes individually. So let's go ahead and add a new mesh. Actually, actually, before I move on. Now nah, we'll do it properly next week. Um, or I might do this on my own and record it. I'm not sure. And then actually that's a good idea. I, if I have the time, I'll record me retopoing this and I'll chuck it up on YouTube memberships and on Patreon and on, um, discord to see the time-lapse that way. If you want to see the time-lapse of me doing the retopo for that, if I, you know, if I want to get this done earlier, that is before Monday, I'll, um, have that up and up on the membership page. Um, cool. Give him shoes. Yeah, I would, but I want him to have sandals. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab a cube, scale down the cube, bring the cube over here to start off with, get it between the legs, bring it all the way over here. All right, cool. And let's just edit this to get rid of that. Get rid of this. Oops, wrong one. Get rid of the faces uh, over there. And we'll put that up like so. Get the right overlap going on there. Don't worry, he won't have square feet 100%. Socks and sandals. I was tempted. All right, cool. So there's his legs so far what i need to do is apply the transforms so i can mirror that all right let's get this going this show on the road so now let's just get that going on there let's put the feet like so let's grab this area here go sideways Grab this, extrude, go like that. Now, his feet are pretty long, so I'm gonna get, I wanna get the balance right as well. So now that you see that his uh, feet are sort of in between, you can see the balance suddenly, suddenly sort of starts to work. So something like that. So generally speaking, even in the middle of your um, center of gravity, you kinda wanna have the center line go up through the body 
And normally, if you didn't have a shit posture, you would line up with the ear. So, um, yeah, keep that in mind. All right, cool. So that's working. Let's get that down like so. Now, <laughs> this will be interesting. Let's uh, seal this up first. And then, hmm, what do I want to do? I'm going to do five division, four divisions. And I'm going to keep it real simple. Uh, let's do a, a, a division there. One, two, three, four. Uh, before I do that, let's rotate this a little bit. Like that. Again, I've got to remind myself that I'm making cartoony feet as well. So one, before I do that, I'm going to bevel out this to keep, to be able to separate the toes a little bit, bevel. And then I'm going to merge those here. Merge these out here. Like that. And I'm going to pull that away so you can see the feet a bit more clearer. This here. This here. This here. That'll just give me the webbing I need between the toes. And I'll add a division here. One, two, three, four. And scale those down on Z a little bit. Just, yeah, you can't, you're starting to see what, the, what I'm trying to do here. And then one, two, three, four, five. Extrude. And we've got ourselves some feet. All right, cool. So now what I'm going to do is flatten this, flatten this. Actually, they kind of look all right. I'm just going to widen out the toes. Now, depending on how you go with your toes, you can either have this one longer, this one longer, depending on how you want to do it. This one's going to go out a little bit so I can put the sandal in between. Yep, like that. And I'm going to widen out this part here. Now, these are cartoony feet. They're not meant to be realistic by any means, all right? <laughs> That's why I'm doing it like this. All right, cool. So if I go ahead and add some loops, add some loops, I'm going to add a loop down the middle here, add a loop down the middle there, here, here, and here. And then a few loops down here. And now if I want, I can go ahead and start to um, sculpt them out and soften out the edges. So I'm going to grab the sculpt brush now and start to smooth them out. Oh, I need to add some loops on the ankle as well. that out. Don't want to overdo it. Just want to do it enough that it softens it out a little bit. Now the toes, you can see it's starting to stretch there. So we need to add some divisions here as well on the toes themselves. There we go. So yeah, we're getting there in the end. So let's go ahead and start to sculpt that out again. Soften it out. Soften it out. Now, I don't want to ruin the top of the toe with uh, like losing that sharpness. So we're going to just do the bottom a little bit. Yeah, that's cool.
All right, nice. So what I can do now is just inflate them a little bit. Oops. All right, cool. And what I want to do is actually, I kind of like that uh, look, but I'm going to go and give him a little bit of a flick in the um, geometry here. So I'm going to grab the soft select. Let's give it a little bit of a tilt. Or just lift them up even. Yeah, like that. Might as well do it on a per toe basis. That, that sounds right. <laughs> All right, move that, move that, move this, move this, and this forward. Just to give it that sort of, that look that I want. And I might, yeah, I might just rotate that out a little bit like that. And there we go. I think that's looking pretty cool. If I smooth that out. This is where I probably would subdivide to get that looking all right. But overall, it's looking pretty good for like a two minute thing. There we go. I'm quite happy with that actually. So what I would do is probably just shape these a little bit more, give that a little bit more character. So what you can do as well, you can sharpen the edges. So I would only do it from the toe onwards. So grab the edge crease and sort of crease it a little bit more. Edge crease is very underrated in the uh, modeling space. I think that doesn't seem to be a lot of people don't seem to realize it's there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think that will be fine. What I would do as well, I would be tempted to um, sharpen those up with a bevel as well. I could add a bevel modifier as well. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give that a bit of a knuckle. Uh, like a like a sort of shelf for the toes. But yeah, just bear in mind this is meant to be stylized, not meant to be realistic at all. It's meant to be very much, you know, as is, like as the picture. The picture is literally just jutting out toes. All right. <laughs> All right, cool. And I might actually do that here as well. Edge crease that. And you'll find that looking pretty cool. All right. So now with a little bit of finesse, you can kind of do the rest, I guess you can say. So, kind of get that going on. Now I'm not adding any extra geometry here because I don't really want to. I'm just playing with what I got. And I could potentially add I could potentially add uh, nails on top, on top of that too. But we'll see how I, whether I need them or not. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, very happy with that. Um, cool, I think that's it. And once I texture these, I think it's gonna look pretty, pretty nice as well. All right. Add a little bit of heel. And because I got that um, ankle sticking out there, I can either do an extrusion and then just soften it out, which I might just do. 
there. So do I and then out. And then I just want to soften that out. Yeah, it's kind of in that line, I guess you can say, if you want to call it that. All right, cool. Now, if I really want to make this feel a little bit more um, sharper, I would just screw with the geometry, like literally just merge it all into a point. like this. And then with the, um, in the settings here, so if you go to your tool settings, or sorry, item settings, and go to vertex crease, I would crease that to get a point. That looks pretty cool. That's exactly what I want. How cool is that? And I could probably do the same thing on the other side. So with ankles, I think it's um ankle. I always forget which direction the ankles are. Like which one's higher, which one's lower. So foot front view. Ankle on the outside is lower. So I have the ankle one step lower. Like down here. And do the same thing. But I'll, I'm going to get a, a, a star, but who cares? Boom. Extrude. Now I'm going to extrude that out again one more time and merge it and then smooth it. Yeah, inside's higher. And then I'll grab this point and vertex crease it. And that looks pretty cool. All right. Yeah, I know. All right, cool. So that's it for the foot. All I gotta do now is the sandal and the sandal is gonna be pretty straightforward. All right. Again, think about this in stylized terms. If I'm gonna, if, you, if you're thinking about like that distortion, think about the fact that it's gonna be tune shaded, all right? All right, cool. So we're getting pretty, pretty close with this model. How cool is that? All right, I want you to put some reacts in the channel if you think I should simulate the singlet <laughs> or not, see if I can simulate the singlet or whether I should sculpt it. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's do fire for simulation and smiley faces for, um, <laughs> smiley faces for sculpting slash modeling. All right, let's go. If, let's see if this actually works. I don't know if there's enough people on, on the stream to say yes or no, but yeah, fire for simulation or uh, smiley faces for clothing, right? As in modeling. All right. All right, cool. So let's go. Let's see what we're going to do here. So with the sandals, while I'm waiting for those to come through. <laughs> yeah, adding cloths into the singlet to model it. All right, cool. Sing the the sandal is going to be pretty create pretty simple. I'm not even going to bother with a lot in this regard. I should probably raise it up. I could probably raise the foot up as well, and then I'll have to raise up the pants. So raising up the pants, pretty straightforward. Just grab the bottom, soft select with a large soft select. Let's bring them up a little bit more. Actually, I might bring it up significantly like that. Model with curves, God, no. <laughs> I 
I might just do a extrusion there. There we go. Cool. All right, so we got that going on there. That's great. And there we go, sweet. I'm pretty happy with that. And also a little trick, uh, you can use the loop tools to cir circularize the ankles. So circle. God, you hate feet. <laughs> I had a student once that was afraid of feet. Like afraid of drawing them, like physically afraid of drawing them. Um, cool. I tried to model a follow blanket with surface curve. Terrible idea. Yeah, for sure. Oh, the mouth ain't too bad. The mouth ain't too bad if you know your loops. All right, cool. So we're going to bring that forward. Very simple sandal. Like I said, very simple. All right, cool. Bring this this way. This one this way. Cool. Add one loop in the middle for now, just to get that going on. And then what I want to do, I think I'm just going to add some loops first. I'm going to flatten those out. Oops. Ah. Flatten. Flatten. Great. All right, cool. So now that that's done, I can go ahead and... Oh, yeah. It's good fun as well. All right, so with that in mind, let's grab these. Just want to give it a little bit of a curve inwards like that. Gonna go ahead and do the same thing here. In like that. Cool. And then I'm gonna subdivide that like so. There we go. Now what I wanna do, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a lip. So with soft select, I'm just going to lip, lip it up a little bit. If I can, without affecting too much of the mesh. Like that. And then I'm going to add a bit of a edge crease. There we go. That looks pretty cool. All right, that's about as much as I need. All right, so what I'm going to do now is just add the string in between. So what I can do is grab the feet. And what I want to do is grab these toes first. And move them like that. Just to separate the toe from the, uh, the big toe from the other toes. Now it's worth noting that these toes aren't gonna wiggle or anything like that. They're just there. They're just there for the the close-up shot. Alright, cool. Nice. So with that done, I'm gonna put the 3D cursor there. Add a single vert. So under mesh, you can see that I'm missing the single vert option. So if I go to preferences, add-ons, mesh, extra objects. Yeah, so add mesh, extra objects, turn that on, save. And if I go to add, now mesh, single vert, that's what I want. Go into edit mode 
and I want to extrude out one edge, one edge like that. And then I'm going to add a skin modifier and scale that down. I always forget what the shortcut is for this one. Roll. Ah. It's like shift A, I forget what it is. Ah. There. Command A, control A. So bring down that as well. All right, cool. So this will be my strap. <laughs> Those aren't, those aren't squished. Yeah, I know, right? Take off one of his toes for funsies. Hey, maybe he may lose one. He maybe gets shot, gets shot in the foot. Who knows? And that will do. I'm going to expand that out a little bit more, make it a bit more chunky. And then I can add a subdivision modifier on top. So I have to add two subdivisions, one for the top above the skin and one on the bottom. So you can see here, it's actually still just a bunch of verts doing their thing. There we go. I think that will do well. So if I go to my skin modifier, smooth shading, we got ourselves our sandals all done. So all I gotta do now is apply, I'm gonna apply those. Apply all. And apply all. Oh no, I wanna apply on that one. I'm gonna add a um, mirror modifier for that one and a mirror modifier for this one. There we go. Sandals complete. Sick. No remesh modifier, no, nothing like that. Ah, oh, cheers. Yeah, the, the shape does kind of remind me of Samurai Jack as well. All right, cool. So that's looking really nice, I reckon. Really, really cool. And of course, if you like what you're seeing and you want to give it, this channel a little bit of support, feel free to subscribe to um, the memberships or subscribe to Patreon or even just drop a quick super like or super chat in the comments. That'd be cool. Try to make this a thing. Try to make this a full-time thing if I can. All right, cool. So I got one smiley face. That means I'm going to model the singlet. Now the singlet's pretty straightforward. All right. So you can see here in the mesh, in the, in the, um, over here, pretty simple stuff. So what I might do instead, I might actually rely on, I'll, I'll model the, um, I'll model the singlet straight. And then I'm going to add a multi-resolution modifier to add the wrinkles. <laughs> well, he's mirrored right now, so he'd lose both toes. All right. I don't know why this thing was got a bit all funny, but I have to scale that up again, I guess. Not sure what happened there. Must have accidentally sc scaled it by accident. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and add the singlet.
Uh, thanks for joining, by the way. Best, best, was it? Best Nuke? Best Nuke? Found your work very interesting on YouTube. That's how I found your channel. Wish you everything. Oh, thank you, mate. Howdy, Comic Sans. All right, cool. So, with this one, uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, just going to grab another cube. Whoops. Gonna add another cube. And then I'm gonna bring it up, scale it down, and automatically I'm gonna go ahead and add a auto mirror. Apply a scale. And let's see what we can do. So obviously we need to get rid of this hole. Get rid of that. Actually, we might do this first and then delete it. Kill that off. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a loop here or two. Add two loops here. And then here, I'm going to scale that up a little bit and then inset, push B to keep it from there and then delete that. If you're wondering what I'm doing, you'll understand in a very short moment. So we've got all that going on there. Clipping's turned on. Let's go ahead and soften that out a little bit. Boom. We got ourselves a pretty nifty looking vest already. <laughs> Paper bag. Exactly right. Uh, we're not done yet though. So his singlet goes down quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that inset down here as well. Delete this, delete this, delete this. Um, and then join those, delete this, and continue to smooth it out. Squish it a little bit. And then let's bring those sleeves down. Ah, fuck off. All right, because I haven't got any center line. I'm going to add a center line now. One, two, and then grab that. that cool and I think that will do for now so what I want to do is I'm going to add a, a subdivision surface to start off with I'll worry about the sleeves again later on I'm going to add a shrink wrap onto the cat onto the model here and see how far we can go All right, so what I want to do here is I'm going to turn off the shrink wrap for now and I'm probably going to kill off that loop because it's actually not conducive to a singlet. Um, I might add another loop here and then delete all the way down to here. Yeah, that looks a bit better. Like that. And then smooth that out a little bit. That looks a bit better. A bit of both. I use both at the same time. Yeah, putting on his digs, uh, Comic Sans. Uh, V-neck, yeah. So we'll fix up that V-neck. Fix this up. All right, pull these forward and up. Pull these ones back. Might add another loop here.
There we go, cool. That's looking all right. With a tiny bit of uh, mesh modifications, we can get that to shrink wrap quite well onto him. So it's actually there. It's got to offset that now a little bit. And then we'll smooth it out afterwards. Yep, cool. So I'm going to actually apply all of those now. And then I'll smooth that out. And there we go. Singlet's on its way. All right, cool. And I can add another shrink wrap if I want to, but I think that will do for now. So what I want to do is go to the, my reference now and see how thin that singlet actually is. So what I can probably do is really thin out that top area because I want it to be pretty spindly. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete a whole bunch of these. And then I'll probably re-mirror re it after the fact. Let's go ahead, kill that off. All right, cool. And kill that off as well. So it's going to have a pretty big hole there, which is what I want. Smooth that out. Yeah, that's cool. All right, cool. So we're going to thin that out a little bit. That hole. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah, that's looking pretty cool now. And then we're going to go ahead and smooth that part. Nah, that looks better. That's what I want. Cool. So that's looking pretty sweet. Now I just want to have it hang off a little bit more. And I'm going to mirror that. Looking pretty sweet. All right, cool. So this is why I sometimes don't bother what shortcut for soft edges. Soft edges, shade smooth. Um, or uh, auto smooth. So this is why I don't sculpt sometimes because it is just a little bit easier to just do it manually, a little bit faster. So you can see here we've got this edge here that is useless. So we're going to kill that off. And that edge there is also useless. Kill that off. Make a new one. Make a new one here as well. All right, cool. So what I want to do now is have this hang off the gra off the shirt a little bit more, off the chest. So I'm going to pull that across like that. And then scale that. I think we're good. So all I'm going to do now is just soften that out a little bit. Thanks for the sign up. Whoever signed up on Patreon, appreciate it. This sort of little notification. Let me see who it was. Bradley Fletcher. Thank you. Cheers. Really appreciate it. All right, cool. So there we go. So there's the shirt done. Let's shade smooth that. And now you can see it's looking pretty, uh, compared to the detail of the rest of the model, it's looking kind of um, weak. So this is where we can sculpt some stuff together. All right, so something like that. I'm gonna have it hang off the chest. Cheers, dude. Also note, if you really wanted to explore how I made Black Curtain, the entire film and its working files are inside of the um, the Dropbox that's included with the Patreon account. Just in case you felt like checking it out. Cool. 
All right, so I'm adding some more divisions here just to keep it even. All right, and I think that looks a bit better. So what I can do now is add a solidify for the singlet. So what I'm gonna do as well, actually, I think it'd be fine. All right, so before I do add anything else, I can add a multi-resolution above everything. I think I have to apply the mirror though first. So I'm gonna put save, apply the mirror, and then add a multi-res. And it's gonna go on top. Subdivide a few times. And now I'm gonna try and sculpt in those details. All right, let's see what we can do. Oh, sorry. I've been up since six. All right, cool. So what we're gonna do here is start to sculpt out these details. So we're gonna go ahead and firstly, I might bring that down. Let's see if we can mirror that. And also making sure that again, if we go to um, tool, front face is only turned on. Now I want that singlet to come down further. So I'm gonna pull it down. I really wanna show that chest. I can also flatten it out over here. And already it's starting to get that there's a little bit of uh, bends in there, which is cool. So what I can do here as well, I'm going to try it out. I'm also going to, all kinds of stuff has to be done. So I've got to bring those in, tighten that up. All right, cool. So that's looking pretty cool. And now, oops, we have an option. We can use this, the uh, fabric brush. <laughs> it runs like shit, <laughs> especially at this resolution. Um, let's see if we can get closer. And it's too strong. Let's see about that. Yeah, I don't like it. That's too too uh ripply but it's cool that it exists i want to be even more stylized in my approach so what i'm going to do is grab the um clay strips and just sort of ooh, let's turn off mirroring And start to sort of sculpt in some in some uh, general shapes. Yep, and grab that. Yeah, it's basically how it works. It's just simulation, like a live simulation, but um, it can be quite finicky. So what I want to do is just infer folds with the uh this this tool here with the brush like so so what i'm doing is basically just a really rough pass of where i want those creases to end up yeah no but the cloth brush tool has never been all that optim well optimized anyway All right, cool. All right, cool. So let's smooth that out a little bit there. Cool. And as for, yeah, let's just get that going on there. And then a little bit of bunching up at the back. Boop, 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 boop. And generally speaking, because he's already bent over, there's not gonna be much folds in the back. 
All right, cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and smooth those out. And you'd be surprised how effective this method can be without any fancy, um, any, any fancy cloth brushes. So there we go. And now what I'm gonna do is just pinch Pinch that, pinch that. Pinch this part here. I'm also gonna go and grab the draw sharp and invert that. Draw sharp. And be mindful, I'm also planning on tune shading this, so I don't wanna to be too crazy with detail. That's coming up good. At least I'm happy with it at least. All right. So once I've done that, I can start to sharpen it all up. Oh yeah, there's always alternate solutions to all kinds of things uh, in Comic Sans. Always alternate solutions. Never think that the most complicated way is usually the best way. It's never is. It rarely ever is. So keep that in mind as well. This is for everyone, basically. Never assume that the most complicated method is the most effective method, because it usually isn't. All right, cool. All right, cool. There we go. I'm really happy with that, actually. I can probably add a little bit of stretch. One, two, three. One, two, three. There we go, cool. Now, as for simulating this, it's not going to really happen. So I'll probably have to either apply the multi-res as a, a as a texture or something, or I like retopo this in mind with the um, the uh, sketch. <laughs> uh, classic. I know that's a joke. <laughs> hey, if it's in Unity, you never know. You might get charged. So I'm just gonna tighten up those those uh bits. Tighten them up. Let's get those creases in there a little bit more. But well, don't have to be too crazy about it. Just gonna crease it up a little bit. There, there, there. And you can see just how quick it was just by modeling it first and then sculpting a pass on top of it like a base mesh. Sometimes it's a better way than doing it full on um, in a, like a classic sculpt sort of thing. And you also got to be mindful of like how you're going to texture it will also determine whether or not it's even worth. Which one is so oh, quite Siri. Um also determine how you you know do things so uh, let's see I think that's pretty cool so what I'm gonna do is just quickly put these a little closer I think or should I pull them out further I'm not sure actually I might actually pull them out further like that and down I actually want one of his nips to show, so like, like that, but uh, it would have to be like really loose. 
like an old, old ratty thing. But notice how, like, because I, I've been moving it around, the folds look much more accentuated too. All right, that was pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. Now I just want to have the the thing hang off his, this really hang off his chest. Because I do want to simulate this as well, like as he moves around, like the um, the bottom of the shirt. So I need to make sure that's relatively separate as well. All right, cool. All right. If you hear the music playing in the background, that's just a uh, playtime with Baba. All right, cool. Sweet. I think that looks really cool. What do you guys think? That's coming up really nice. I like the fact that the gravity of his uh, pad posture is causing the shirt to bunch up at the bottom. Yeah, cool. The only problem is that, of course, is that that's the before and that's the after. What a big difference, right? So what we need to do is save that. I'm going to save that as a brand new version. Always be uh, iteratively saving. And here's a little trick. If you've got a sculpt that you like, and then but it's too far gone from the original, which is this, push this button, shape, apply base. And what that will do is apply the shape to the sculpt, to the lower res model. So now it's permanent. Cool. So what I'm going to do is bring that down in the viewport settings. That'd be cool. That's actually not bad. Actually, would would actually work all right at that level. So that's pretty cool. So I might not apply the subdivision yet. All right. So what I need to do is turn on the sub the um. Let's just see how this looks. I actually don't know if the, if I move the sub solidify on top of it, it would actually screw it all up. No, it doesn't work that way. So what I can do is keep it at low res and just try adding another subdivision and see what happens. So that looks pretty good. Not bad. We'll see. All right, cool. So that will do. And now I think we'll wrap up the cl class, um, the stream with um, the gas mask. So the gas mask I'm going to do in a really cartoony kind of way, I guess you can say. So the gas mask is meant to cover up all the ear holes the eyes the nose and the mouth because uh, the way the story works is that if you expose yourself to air you get like this anaphylactic shock although the body can still be exposed to it and you won't get affected by it so um that's why the gas masks are worn in the way they are they're like they're just they're not even gas masks they're just air filters um cool yeah, I really like that. Anyway, uh, starting from the top, let's start with the eyes, eye sockets. So I'm going to add a cylinder and bring that up to the eyes. Now, again, this is a sci-fi cartoon thing. So <laughs> in terms of realism of the gas mask, I don't really care. All right, just keep that in mind. All right, cool. So there's our first sign of what we want to do. I'm going to add a play old transforms and then I'm going to go to my uh, mirror modifier. <laughs> oh, already it's going to be interesting, right? So imagine, I also remember I got this um, drawing on the side view. 
So this one here is where the inspiration is coming from. So you have to wear a watch as well. So add that too. Um, but yeah, this is a sort of shape. So I want to try and em em like sort of accentuate. <laughs> Looks like a model of me. Nice one. I'm not sure whether or not to do like a rounded one. I think I'll keep them round. So with normal selection turned on, I'm going to bring that out. GZ. Also, I think the normals are inverted. Let's just double check. Yep, they're inverted. Let's just go ahead and fix that up. Uh, so there's a little valve. So the actual cigarette will have a little stick, right? It'll be like a, on like a like a stick. The cigarette will be on a stick, and that stick goes into a little tiny valve. <laughs> there's like a sealed valve, and you can still smoke through it through the through the valve, and it like it still lets you f smoke the cigarette, but it still filtrates out the um <laughs> still filtrates out the uh, things that make you have anaphylaxis. The smoke particles are smaller. So yeah. You can still kill yourself in many ways in this game in this uh show. Alright, we're gonna say shade smooth on that one. So I will eventually like let's uh yeah, I'll keep it simple. I'll worry about that later, but I could technically do that. So we've got that going on there. Yeah, the cigarette may actually filter out some of it. Maybe it's a myth. Who knows? That's a good point. That's a good idea. Cucumber covers for the eyes. Yep, totally. Um, let's see. Let's go back to my reference, actually. The side view. Oh, I've got too many Photoshops open. Um, there we are. Cool. So what I want to do is, hmm. All right. Cool. So what I'm going to do is bring these forward. A little bit more forward, like that. And then I might have to actually add. I've got an idea. Actually, I might separate the head and do a remesh. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this and select the head up until here. Not here. That duplicate P selection to separate that. And then I'm going to go ahead and Ah, in edit mode, expand that out just a little bit more, like that. And over here, on this disgusting edge, select loose. So if you go to select, and if you go to select similar loose, loose geometry, that should have worked. Let's go non-manifold, select. By trait non manifold. There you go. I'm gonna extrude that out and then flatten it. There we go. That's what I want. That will just provide the shelf for the remesh to work properly. All right, cool. Save that, and then I'm gonna go ahead and go to quad remesh. Set that to like 500 remesh. Let's see if that works. And it worked. It worked really well. <laughs> oh, that's so much easier. All right, cool. So there's our mesh. Um, did I set it to be symmetrized? Let's not. Let's do that again. Make sure that's symmetrized. Perfect. So there you go. You got that going on. So what I'm going to do. Make sure that they're both open. Um, 
what I'm going to do is just sort of sculpt this now to sort of fit what I want for the character, which is actually quite good. All right, so I'm going to shade smooth that. And over here, because I want his head to be sticking out, I'm actually going to go and delete these. Because it's kind of meant to be like a strap. And also this makes it more interesting looking. Interesting to look at rather. All right, cool. So we've got that going on. That's looking pretty cool. And that nose and stuff will be like sort of softened out a little bit, a bit more to get what I want. All right, cool. Exciting. So what I'm going to do, first things first, we need to, I'm going to smooth that out over here. Like that, that looks nicer. This part here, I'm going to go ahead and select those edges and sort of soften that out. Not soften that, straighten it out rather. That looks better. All right, so we've got that going on. Let's see what we can do. Sculpt mode. We're going to go ahead and smooth out the ears. And I'll probably add like a sort of cap or cup on, on top of the ears for that. There you go. That looks pretty cool. Actually, like, don't mind that. Actually, that shape there. That's kind of cool. I can probably add, add like a a weird <laughs> demon demon thing for the mask. I'll keep that in mind. Um, I'm gonna smooth out the nose as well and these features, and then sort of bring it back forward. like that. So it's going to be like more of a straight face. So bring that like that and kind of get those pointy point those pointy bits that I want out of the um the features of the character. Something like that looks kind of cool. Almost like those um, those Renaissance uh, figures. Those what do you call them? Those things of the bird, the bird beaks. There we go. Cool. We pro yeah, adding add hearing holes, circular pattern. That's cool. That's a good idea. All right, cool. Yeah, I actually don't mind that idea. All right, cool. So let's just go ahead and smooth that out. So I really want to get that nice and sharp. So again, the goal here is, as I mentioned yesterday, is to try and make sure that I'm not overly relying on subdivision modifiers to get the job done. That looks pretty sick. I don't mind that at all. All right, cool. So what I might do here is give that a nice sharp contour. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Do the same thing over here. 
Well, I'm going to need to use a tent as well. And that's looking pretty cool. I really like that. All right. Now, just to give it in context, we can actually um, change the color of this. Let's give it a quick material change. Make it black. So that's kind of how it's looking so far. All right, only a few minutes ago for this stream. So what I'm gonna do is just quickly push these back into the head. To see what we got working here. And I'll probably fix that up. I'm actually gonna, gonna add a little, little, a little loop around the mask to make that work better. And what I wanna do, I might just quickly just duplicate one of these to act as a filter. So let's just go ahead and remove the mirror modifier for now. And just make this bigger. And what I wanna do is Stick it on the outside of the face, like this. Oh, shit. It's got some skewing going on there. That's all right, fuck it. Um, so I can actually, let's just quickly do it. Let's just make a new one. All right, cool. So, New cylinder, bring it down. Like so. And like so. And then here on the normal, let's just go I, E. Let's do I again. E. And then here, I'm gonna go ahead and just do an extrusion along normals. Or just extrude faces E. X. Okay, didn't do it too well. Let's try that again. Extrude along normals. Ah! Extrude along normals. Come on, mate. There we go. Cool. And shade smooth. What do you guys think so far? I think it's looking kind of cool. <laughs> I could technically mirror this as well, so save this. This is meant to be the air filters. Could do it that way as well. But I want to be able to see the um the smoke go through it. So yeah. I think that's looking pretty cool. What do you guys think? Alright, well that's enough for today. I will probably continue on this over the week, maybe, if I have time. Otherwise, on Monday, we can continue on with the retopo. But yeah, I think it's looking pretty dang cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's enough for today. Thank you for watching. It's been great. Uh, made some really good progress today. And I'm really happy with that. And we're almost done with the character um, thing. All right, cool. I'll let you guys go. See you later. Catches, have fun. And uh, yeah, see you next week. Cheers.